I am back with another stamp collecting video featuring stamps from my grab bag. For today's episode, the stamps that I have chosen are these two stamps. These stamps are from the People's Republic of Bulgaria, which is what Bulgaria was called between 1946 and 1990 when it was under rule by the Bulgarian Communist Party. These stamps are part of a larger set of six on old ancient trees. Now, at first I was a little bit hesitant to feature these stamps. I mean, at face value, it just looks like some pretty pictures of trees. But when I started researching them, I was surprised to find that these stamps are actually pictures of real landmarks with interesting history behind them not just generic pictures of trees. Let's look a little bit more into them. The way that I researched these stamps was using an online acrylic keyboard. When I typed in these words at the top of each stamp, I realized that they all specified a tree species, an age, and a location in Bulgaria. For example, take this 13ST stamp, which stands for 13 Bulgarian Stotnikas. Searching the words at the top of each stamp, this stamp actually features the now 1300 year old Bosnian pine tree in the Pirin Mountains. It is Bulgaria's oldest coniferous tree named Baikushev's Pine after the forest ranger who discovered it. This is one of the oldest trees in the world. It actually rivals the age of the entire country of Bulgaria itself. Or consider my 4CT stamp. This features an 800 year old poplar tree that still stands outside the city hall in Pestra, Bulgaria. Pestra means cave. Presumably the town is named after some nearby caves that are popular with tourists. The 3 CT stamp features a 600 year old oriental plane tree that stands in the city center of the town called Sandansky. Note this stone figure in front of it, which is also seen on the stamp. This little stone structure is actually a mineral water fountain with some beautiful carvings on it and actually a very interesting history. It was carved in 1854 by a Bulgarian stonemason in the city of Ceres, which is now in Greece just south of the Bulgarian border. But at the time this fountain was made, these were all part of one region just called Thrace. It wasn't separate into Greece and Bulgaria yet. This area was ruled by the Ottomans, and the fountain was built to adorn a central courtyard for a new mosque that was being built in the same city. Now, the Bulgarians were not happy at all under the rule of the Ottoman Empire, and this time period of Bulgaria was actually called the Bulgarian Renaissance period, or the Bulgarian National Revival. During this time, there were a lot of growing nationalistic opinions about how Bulgaria shouldn't be ruled by the Ottomans and they wanted their own independence. The maker of this fountain must have shared some of those views because there's actually a lot of really interesting symbolism that he hid in his fountain carvings. It's hard to see from the image that I have, but carved on the fountains there are two lions on pedestals with chains around their necks, a sun on one side, a moon and stars on the other, and two goblets. There was another piece to this fountain that doesn't exist anymore and this was a large head of a lion from which the spout of the fountain came out of its mouth and wrapped around the lion's neck was a snake. Apparently, Bulgaria is symbolized by the lion being choked or strangled by the snake, which was the Turks. The lion is actually on Bulgaria's coat of arms, and their currency, the lev, means lion. Two smaller chained lions symbolize oppression spiritually and politically. The moon and the stars symbolize Turkey. The sun was meant to be the rise or the persistence of the Bulgarian nation, which would overtake the Turkish and put them in the incense burners. The artist even managed to carve an inscription that in Turkish script reads something positive like mashallah or goodwill, but if you read it in Arabic, the same symbols say something really negative like down with the emperor or the sultan is a tyrant or something like that. All of this went unnoticed until 1908 when somebody came visiting the mosque, saw the fountain in the courtyard and felt that there was something off with it. I don't know if they were able to read the Arabic or just thought the symbolism was a little bit not pro-Islam, so they actually ordered the fountain removed and destroyed, but luckily it wasn't. Whoever they gave this instruction to took the fountain and just hid it in their house for a few years. After that, it was found in the Balkan War by the Bulgarians, moved a little bit farther north, and then eventually in 1912 after World War I, it found its place in the city of Sandansky and now it sits under this tree. Now the interpretation of this artistic symbolism is somewhat controversial and also all of my information that I got from it is being translated from sites that were all in Bulgarian, but either way this is still a very interesting story and clearly a special piece of art to the Bulgarians as it was made by a Bulgarian artist, survived through the Ottoman rule and several wars, and it was even important enough to be represented on the little stamp. 
Before we move on, I want to touch on another monumental tree that's in the Sandansky region that I thought might be the one represented in the stamp because it's also an ancient old plane tree and it also has a fountain underneath it. This tree is five kilometers away in the town of Tsigurovo, which is a Turkish word meaning the devil's place. They called it that because this area had frequent thunderstorms. The tree was actually struck by lightning, which is why it's always had kind of like a hole in the middle and is a little bit of a twisted, awkward shape. It is around 800 years old and it was literally used as a bread baking oven back in the early 1920s. And then later on, it was a slaughterhouse. So when Bulgaria was under communist rule and they had the agricultural program to hand out the food to everyone, animals were slaughtered and handed out or distributed out to families under the roof or the cave of this tree. This is also the site of reportedly some of the best mineral water in Bulgaria as certified by a Tsar in the 1940s who sampled mineral water from all over the country. But I was able to discover that the fountain beneath this tree where you can get some of that delicious mineral water was built in 1988, which is too late for this stamp. So I think the tree on the stamp is the one that I first talked about that's actually in the town of Sandansky, even though this other cool monumental tree is also in the Sandansky region. The most interesting stamp of this set, in my personal opinion, is the 2CT stamp. It turns out that this stamp is a picture of a 1,100 year old plane tree located in the town of Belastica, and it is famous for a lot of reasons. First of all, it is the thickest tree in Bulgaria, and it has a girth of around 13.7 meters or 45 feet in thickness. Second is the folklore story behind how this tree came to be planted here, which is surprisingly gory. In the year 1014, Basil II, the Byzantine emperor, earned his nickname as the Bulgar Slayer in the Battle of Claydon. Claydon is near the modern day village of Klyaj, which also means key. Here he fought against the Bulgarian emperor Tsar Samuel. Basil II and his army came up into Bulgaria along the Struma River. Samuel knew that he would have to pass through the valley of Clydeon, so he put up a barricade and blocked Basil's army where they fought for a while. But while Basil's army attacked the Bulgarians at the entrance to the pass, his general, Nikiphorus Zippius, led some troops back around the Belasitsa mountain and attacked the Bulgarians from behind. Samuel lost the battle and narrowly escaped to a nearby fortress, leaving his army captive or prisoners to Basil II. Here's where it gets bloody. Basil II rounded up the defeated Bulgarians, separated them into groups of 100, and had every 99 out of 100 of them blinded in both eyes. For the remaining 100th man, he only blinded one eye so that that person could act as a guide for the rest of the unit to help kind of lead them around. Apparently, when their leader Samuel, who had escaped, saw the state of all his blinded men, he suddenly dropped dead from a heart attack in grief at all the violence that had been done to them. After the battle, Basil II gave some of these uh, blinded soldiers prisoners to Nikephorus, the general who had done the sneak attack, and he kind of left him in charge of the Philippopolis region, which is now Plovdiv in Bulgaria. They had a lot of empty farmland there, so Nikephorus put them to work kind of founding villages and farming, and that's where they founded the town of Belastica, which is there. He had himself a nice old fortress built by these soldiers, the ruins of which are said to still stand today by this plane tree. And the plane tree itself was also said to be planted by these soldiers when the fortress was built. He also had a monastery built here in this region in 1018, which is really within the same region of the plane tree and the ruins. So it's within about 800 meters and you can see the tree from the monastery. That's a pretty gory origin story for how this tree came to be here. So I'm happy to report that there's another nicer story associated with this tree. And that is the popular Bulgarian poet Pencho Slavekov is said to have spent a lot of time relaxing under this tree and this is where he was inspired to write one of his most popular poems, a love poem called Inseparable. Actually, instead of inspired, the article I read said that while he was sleeping under the tree, the branches whispered the whole story to him and then he wrote them down, but whatever you want to call it. The love poem Inseparable is a very Romeo and Juliet-esque poem about two lovers who want to be together but they 
can't because their families are mortal enemies and really feuding and it both ends in their tragic death by suicide but finally after their tragic deaths they are able to be together forever inseparable in the form of two trees that grow up from their graves with branches entwined together. Pencho Slavikov is a pretty big deal in Bulgaria. He and his father who was also a writer have a bench with their statues on it in the Slavikov Square in the capital of Bulgaria in Sofia. Pencho is also featured on their 50 Lev banknote so it's pretty cool that this small town and this tree can lay claim as one of the places that inspired this writer to write one of his most popular work. As for the two remaining stamps I couldn't find any specific trees that they referenced. The one CT stamp was apparently a 500 year old walnut tree in the region of Drianovo that apparently no longer exists but that town still has walnut groves and apparently they have a yearly walnut festival featuring walnut foods and a lot of folk dancing and then for the 10 CT stamp I found references to a royal oak or a great big king oak tree in this protected area called Tulovska Koria but not really any other information about it. Finally because this entire video is basically just me going off on tangents about random things I learned I wanted to throw in some last interesting finds. There's actually a European tree of the year competition where countries in Europe submit trees that have interesting old stories and people all vote for a winner. Bulgaria is obviously one of the participants and even has won on some years. They also have their own countrywide competition called a tree with roots and a lot of the trees that I have just talked about were contestants in this competition. The winning tree of the tree with roots competition gets expert diagnostics from the specialists of the Association of Arborists. They basically can come and look at the winning tree and give recommendations for better care in preserving the tree so it's kind of cool. Okay that's it for today. I hope you had fun watching this video. I certainly learned a lot from these stamps of pictures with just trees. If you liked the video don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for some more stamp collecting stories. Bye!